A few years ago on Breakfast, we were joined by international singer and guitarist Eric Bibb. You probably remember his music. It's a rich blend of the blues with a bit of folk, country, gospel and soul thrown in. Eric is the son of New York folk singer Leon Bibb, and he used to hang out with the acoustic folk music scene from the time, including Mm. performers like Pete Seeger and Bob Dylan. It gets better than that. His godfather was Paul Robeson. Well, speaking of such a blue-chip musical heritage, at a recent concert... A fan offered Eric the opportunity to play a 1930s guitar owned by the blues legend Booker White. He jumped at the chance and it inspired an album, Booker's Guitar, which recently won the 2010 Downbeat Critics Poll for Best Blues Album. I'm very pleased to say that Eric joins you again in the Breakfast Studio. Eric, welcome back to Radio National Breakfast. Thank you, Fran. Great to be here. Now, tell us a little about this uh, this guitar that uh, Booker White used to play. Yeah. Yeah. it was a steel-bodied resophonic uh, national guitar um, with a wizened and weathered headstock that had some of Booker's homemade charms affixed to it, had had his set list taped to the side in his own handwriting, and it was a lovely sounding instrument that inspired a song, and when I was getting ready to record the song, I sent the lyrics to the man who owns it. He said, I'm going to put these lyrics in the guitar case so the guitar can get to know the song because I think you should record that song on Booker's guitar, which is what I ended up doing, and that inspired a whole record, yeah. That is a lovely story. Now, I was hoping you'd have the guitar with you here, but mm-hmm. you can't. It's just too precious for that. It's right. I, it's not mine to uh, to travel with. It's not mine at all, but uh, I have access to it when uh, there's a special occasion, so that's good enough. Well, it in- inspired a song, which then became inspiration for an album, but does mm. a guitar with that kind of tradition, does it, does it inspire... More than that, does it change the way you play it or, mm-hmm. or feel it? Well, what it did for me was uh, it confirmed uh, my connection to uh, this uh, fantastic tradition of uh, acoustic, you know, finger-picking blues guitar. And it just told me that it was time to even go deeper, to um, uh, continue writing new material, which I did for Booker's Guitar, but also to keep... Uh, plumbing the uh, the well for uh, older material that works for me, you know. So you went looking for songs or looking for a sound? Looking for songs. It's always about the song because uh, the sound is kind of in my inner ear. I've been listening to this music and marinating my soul in it for a long time. Uh, so what I'm really looking for, if I'm not writing a new song, I'm looking for an older song that resonates with me, yeah. Well, talking about tradition, you're, as we mentioned in the introduction, your own tradition with folk, folk and blues mm-hmm. goes way, way back. Your father was Leon Bibb in the folk scene with the likes of Pete Seeger, your godfather, mm-hmm. Paul Robeson. What did Paul Robeson pass down to you? Mm. Uh, an incredible sense of purpose. Uh, I had a photo of Paul holding me in one big palm and my twin sister in another, and that picture is just kind of... Uh, a part of my my inner screen, and I think of him a lot. He was a man of uh, terrific integrity, I think, very courageous. And, um, yeah, he kind of just is there as a reminder to uh, live your beliefs. Mm. Last time we spoke, you talked about a childhood conversation you had with Bob Dylan, Mm. and uh, you're talking about playing the guitar, and Bob Dylan advised you, I think you were only 11 at the time, to keep it simple, forget all that fancy stuff. Mm. Is it still your philosophy? Well... It was good advice then, and I think it's, um, I've repeated that story enough times. I, it's time for me to meet Mr. Dillon and thank him for that little bit of uh, advice because um, I've gotten a lot of mileage out of that conversation, but also the advice itself, uh, more and more, less is more for me. So that was good advice, yeah. Talking about meeting Mr. Dillon, he's been in the news a bit lately for uh, mm-hmm. perhaps wondering or straying from his true beliefs. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have a view on that, on his decision, for instance, not to play a certain track in China? Okay, what uh, I, I didn't follow that. I knew that there was controversy, and I knew it took a long time for them to basically approve his, uh, his coming there. What, what did he decide not to play? Blowing, they asked him not to play Blowing in the Wind. Wow. You see, the, the winds of change are, are blowing and picking up uh, in their, uh, their um, energy all around the world, obviously. And uh, the fact that they wouldn't want him to sing that song and inspire uh, uh, a groundswell of, of uh, uh, pr- protest, perhaps, 
is significant. That speaks to the power of music. Um, the fact that he decided not to do it, that's his choice. You know, the song is out there. He's made his mark. Um, I'm sure he is um, more interested in being a performing musician than he is a leader of a mass movement. Um, I can empathize with that. Um, I don't fault anybody for making a decision that, that works for them. I think his um, contribution is indelible. Would you have made the same decision? Would you have agreed? If it meant not it being able to appear at all, um, it's possible. You also have to consider that the publicity around him not singing it might in fact be more inspiring and, and, and powerful than who's actually playing the song. So, you know, authorities sometimes get it wrong. Sometimes it's best just to let the man sing the song because all the hoopla around him not singing it is also giving people uh, uh, food for thought. Well, we're going to get you to play a song for us in a moment, but uh, just before we do, you're going to play at the Byron Bay Blues Fest mm. again. You've been there a couple of times. Do you like, is that particular festival something special? It is. Um, it's special for me as a, a musician because I really get a chance to hear a lot of performers in one place that um, I might not have had a chance to hear uh, somewhere else, being on the road a lot. Um, it's a big collection of wonderful, iconic musicians there. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing B.B. King and Mavis and Toots and the Maytals and, yeah going to be great. It's going to be great, no doubt about that. Well, you've got a big following here in Australia. You uh, grace us with your presence frequently now, which is mm. fantastic. What are you going to play for us this morning? You know, speaking of older songs, I thought I'd play a tune I learned from a man named John Cephas, the late, wonderful John Cephas. It's called Going Down the Road Feeling Bad. Let's have a listen. <laughs> Well, I'm going down that road feeling bad Going down that road feeling bad I'm going down that road feeling bad, honey, babe And I ain't gonna be treated this way What I got gonna show bring you back What I got gonna show bring you back What I got gonna show bring you back, honey babe, and I ain't gonna be treated this way. Well, I'm down in this valley on my knees. In this valley on my knees I'm down here in this valley on my knees Honey, babe And I ain't gonna be treated this way They're feeding me on cornbread and peas Feed me on cornbread and peas Well, they feed me on cornbread and peas Honey, babe And I ain't gonna be treated this way I'm going where the weather suits my clothes Going where the weather suits my clothes Going where the weather suits my clothes, honey, babe And I ain't gonna be treated this way I'm going down that road feeling bad But I'm going down that road feeling bad I'm going down that road feeling bad, honey, babe And I ain't gonna be treated this way 
a beautiful way to kick off the day with a little bit of Eric Bibb for breakfast. Eric, thank you so much for joining us again here on Breakfast. Thank you, Fran. Eric Bibb, in the country for Blues Fest and a whole lot of other dates. You can find them on our website. You're listening to ABC Radio National Breakfast.